Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for clicking on this Rank the Movies video. I am Martin Prevost. Uh, this is our 99th video I've released. Now, this is only counting the main series. I'm not talking about my bonus Thursdays or my live streams of movies from the Unwatched show or anything else I've posted. I'm talking about these straight-up weekly reviews. This is number 99. So I'll cover... Um, so I'm going to do something special next week for number 100. Um, I haven't fully worked that out yet. But it'll be something fun, and I think you'll enjoy it. But this week, we're talking about one of my favorite uh, movie franchises. Uh, it's definitely up there on its, like, how much I love it. Um, it is, as a full franchise, it is my highest ranked full franchise. But that's only because uh, once you get into the, the top 100, is just single movies. And once you get out of the top 100, now it's franchises just lumped together. And that is the Resident Evil franchise. Um, I know there's a seventh live-action movie coming out. It is a reboot, uh, which is fine. But I'm going to talk about the six original films today. Um, and, of course, that starts with Resident Evil, the original. This is all based on the Capcom video game of the same name. Um, and, overall, I like these movies. I, they're good popcorn films. They're not great stories and characters. They're just really fun popcorn films. Um, and that's what I can say about all of them. Uh, the first one is kind of inspired after the original game. I um, mean, a group of people going into a mansion where the T-Virus has been released, and it's about them trying to survive and escape the T-Virus and figure out who released it in the first place. Um, all the movies star Mila Jovovich as an original character called Alice, um, who is the protagonist of all six movies. Um, once you're done with the original Resident Evil, we then move into Resident Evil Apocalypse, where we are now moving into Raccoon City. This one follows more of the storyline of the Nemesis video game, um, which is the second game in the series. And you actually get the Nemesis in this one. Um, you also finally get to meet some other characters from the game um, in Jill Valentine. Uh, it's the primary one who you meet in this movie. But this one is just about them trying to escape Raccoon City as the T-Virus takes over, and the Umbrella Corporation trying to squanch uh, the T-Virus in Raccoon City. Uh, this is followed by Resident Evil Extinction, where you now get to meet another one of the uh, recurring characters from the video game. We've met Jill Valentine. This one is... Oh, wow, my brain is totally... Claire Redfield. You meet Claire Redfield in this one, and Albert Wesker, um, who is the head of the Umbrella Corporation in this series. They are, again, big characters from the video games. Uh, this one takes place in a post-apocalyptic, um, zombie-infested world, where that's about survival. It's about, you know, it's taking place in the desert, so it's this hot and humid uh, climate. And it's just about, it's about survival. It's about the last remnants of society trying to survive against the zombie outbreak. Uh, that would then lead us to the fourth movie in the set, which is Resident Evil Afterlife, where we now gain Chris Redfield uh, into our cast of characters from the games. And uh, this one is them in a maximum security prison. As the, in, a town, in Los Angeles, it's being overrun as they're trying to get to a boat out at sea. And uh, there's more stuff with Albert Wesker and Umbrella. We then move on to Resident Evil Retribution, which moves us into the Umbrella Training Facility, where they tested the T-Virus in Moscow. The training facility is in Russia. Um, in this one, we gain... Oh, uh, I can't actually think of the character's name right now. Um, we gain another one of the characters, and Ali Wong is another one we gain. This one, you gain a lot of the characters from the video games, and they're one appearance in this movie. Um, this one takes place in a training facility. It is about escaping the training facility and surviving. These movies are really simple. And then the final chapter is just that. It's the end of the franchise. Um, it's about the defeat of Umbrella and the cure for the virus. Now, why do I like these movies? Well, beyond the fact that they're just good popcorn films, I think they're pretty decent... Um, Movies overall, I get it. If you're a fan of the Resident Evil franchise, these are probably awful, awful movies um, that don't really follow the games at all. 
Um, my thing is, I never really got into the Resident Evil games. I wasn't one who played them um, when I was a kid. I couldn't handle the tank controls. They bothered me too much um, for my style of gaming. So, you know, that's me. I never got into it, so the movies were a lot easier for me to get into. Because it still had these stories, it still had these characters, <clears throat> but it was in a method I could handle and I could actually, like, watch and enjoy. Um, so that's, that's me. If you're a huge Resident Evil fan of the video games, I get it. These are not your kind of movies. Because they take the characters, they do a lot of different stuff, and other than the first two movies, they're not really based on the games anymore. They might pull things from them, but they're not really based on the games anymore. Um, I, this is going to be a shorter video because, again, I have gotten in-depth on a lot of these movies um, already back in my uh, top ten favorite video game movies list, which came out a long time ago. That was probably, like, episode eight, somewhere in that level, um, between eight and fifteen. So that was a long time ago. Um, I covered most of these because I like this franchise, and I like a lot of parts of this franchise. I am going to do a final rankings, however of how I feel about these movies and how I think they rank. Because I think if you're going to watch the franchise, that's fine. Watch the franchise. It's not really one you need to start at the first one and work your way through each part. You can basically drop yourself into any one of these movies and uh, be happy and content and good. Um, my least favorite... This is a hard one. This is a hard coin toss because there are two of these movies I really don't care for. Um... But my least favorite is probably the final chapter. I think it's... I don't know. It's it, Resident Evil Retribution sets up a great ending that leads you into a great movie. So I feel like the final chapter is always a disappointment. Because I'm always watching these movies as a series. So I get to Retribution where it ends with all of our characters um, from the games and our Alice standing on the White House, getting ready for a final battle. And this movie skips that battle and skips that entire plot and drops every character who was on that White House except Wesker and Alice. So I guess it's a letdown. It's a letdown every time I turn this one on. Um, next up in the list is Resident Evil Apocalypse. This is the second movie in the franchise. I don't know. I, don't, I think it's just... There's a lot of things. I just never cared for this movie. Um, it's not bad. I've learned to appreciate it over um, the course of being a fan of this series. But I just I just don't think it's that strong of an entry. Um, I'm really sorry. It did very well at the box office, which is why they kept making movies in this series. Uh, but I just don't think it's that strong of an entry. I think, you know, I lost a lot of my interest in the Resident Evil franchise for a while. Um, because of that movie. Like, the third one, I really didn't care about when it came out. The fourth one, I only saw because I went with one of my friends, uh, AJ, uh, to the budgets one day, and I watched it. Uh, and the fourth position, I'm going to put Resident Evil Retribution. Now, I genuinely like Retribution. Um, hi, Apocalypse. I genuinely like Retribution. I think it's a good movie. Um, I think it's well done in the franchise. I enjoy watching it. I think it just, other than the setup for what should have been the final chapter, I don't think it does anything. I don't think this movie does anything. Like, it doesn't really tell a story, because the story is we need to get out of this base. It, like, it's got some cool moments, and it's a fun setup, but it doesn't go anywhere. Especially if you're watching this as a series, it doesn't go anywhere. It kind of just stalls for an hour and a half, and then you get all hyped up for what's going to come next, and then you get the final chapter. So I think that's why this one's going to rank at uh, four. At the number three spot, it's going to be Resident Evil Extinction. This is the third movie in the franchise. I think it's a really well done movie. Um, again, I never got into it when it first came out because I didn't care for Apocalypse. Um, and then gotten pulled back in. I did watch it eventually, finally, um, when one of my friends had it on DVD, I finally sat down and watched it. It wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. Um, but because I still didn't really care for Apocalypse or Resident Evil, like, I wasn't invested in the series yet. So, but now I go back and I watch it. I really like watching Extinction. Uh, my number two spot goes to Resident Evil Afterlife. 
Uh, this is the one that got me really into the franchise and got me invested in the uh, whole thing, the three movies before it and the two movies after it. Um, because when I saw this one in that budget theater, I thought it was, a, like, it felt like watching a video game at times. Um, there were some very well done fight scenes that you just felt like you could just be holding a controller and controlling the character in the movie. Um, so I thought that was very well done, and I really liked that. Um, and that's what drug me back into the series and got me invested in it and got me really excited for Retribution, which, again, wasn't a bad movie, um, and the final chapter. Which means my favorite one is the original. I still love watching the original, and it's always the original that makes me walk down the road of watching the rest of the Resident Evil franchise. I always go, man, I want to watch Resident Evil, and then I'll just watch the rest of the Resident Evil movies. Um, so this one, so it is the first one. This is one of those franchises where I think it picks up steam. Um, clearly, I got a thing where I basically like every other one the best. Because I got one, three, four, and then five and six. So it's it's definitely one. I think it's a scattershot uh, franchise that has some really good entries and some all right to decent entries. Um, overall, if you've never checked out the Resident Evil franchise, go ahead, check it out. There is a remake coming out or a reboot. Um, called Resident Evil Raccoon City. I do want to go see it, because it's not the Alice character. It's it's the type of movie, if it is the same type of zombie movie as this one, but maybe more faithful to the game for those people, and, you know, focuses on different things, that's fine. I'm still going to go check it out. I'm still going to be invested in this as a movie franchise. I checked out the CG films. Um, I couldn't get into them, because they really do require knowledge of the video games um, to get into them. And I just don't have that. But overall, I like the Resident Evil franchise. I think it is a lot of fun. And if you haven't checked it out, uh, check it out. It's, it's a good time. So like I said, next week is our 100th episode. Or my 100th episode. I got some plans of what I want to do. We'll see what happens. But definitely check that out next week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to make sure you don't miss anything uh, that's coming up. Otherwise, I will see you next week, and have a good one.